In this video, we'll learn about some applications of the distance and midpoint formulas through some examples. So let's look at our first example problem. Consider the three points A, which has coordinates negative 2, comma 1, B, which has coordinates 2, comma 3, and C, which has coordinates 3, comma 1. So first thing they ask us to do is find the length of each side of the triangle ABC. Now it's going to be helpful here for us to have a picture, so let's just plot these three points really quick. So I'm going to draw my axes here. So negative 2, comma 1, I'm just going to tick off some points on my axes. So negative 2, comma 1 is going to be this point right here, negative 2 on the x-axis, 1 on the y-axis. There's my point A. 2, comma 3 is going to be over here, 2 on the x-axis, 3 on my y-axis. And then 3, comma 1, that's going to be over here, 3 on the x-axis, 1 on the y-axis. So my triangle is going to be something like this. Now if I want to find the length of each side of the triangle, I'm going to use the distance formula. So the distance from A to B is going to be the square root of the difference in the x-coordinates squared plus the difference in the y-coordinates squared. So the x-coordinate of A is negative 2. The x-coordinate of B is 2, so negative 2 minus 2, and then I'm going to square that, plus. And then the uh, difference in the y-coordinates, the y-coordinate of A is 1, and the y-coordinate of B is 3, so I have 1 minus 3 squared. And that's it. We just plug into the distance formula and then see what this works out to be. So this is going to be negative 4 squared, and then 1 minus 3 is negative 2 squared. Negative 4 squared is positive 16, negative 2 squared is positive 4, so that works out to be the square root of 20. And in general, you should leave your answer in exact form whenever possible. We could type the square root of 20 into our calculators and get a decimal approximation, and that might sometimes be useful, but the exact answer here is the square root of 20. Similarly, we can find the lengths of the other two sides of this triangle. So the distance from A to C is going to work out to be 5, and the distance from B to C is going to work out to be the square root of 5. So check those on your own and make sure that you can get those answers, but those are our other two distances that we're looking for. Now for part B of this problem, when they ask us to verify that the triangle is a right triangle, what exactly are they asking us to do? Well, remember that when we have a right triangle, we have the relationship that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs equals the square of the length of the hypotenuse. But the first problem here is that we're maybe not exactly sure which of these three sides is, is supposed to be the hypotenuse, or in other words, we don't know where the right angle is supposed to be. But if we look at our picture, and this is one of the good reasons uh, that we wanted to write, uh, draw a picture here, it, it looks like if there's going to be a right angle in this triangle, it looks like it might be there. Now, we don't know that that's a right angle yet, but if we had to guess that there would be one, then that's where we would guess it would be, just by looking at it. That looks much more like a right angle than the other two angles in this triangle. So what would have to be true about these three distances in order for this to be a right triangle? Well, what have we figured out? We figured out that this distance is the square root of 20. We figured out that the distance from B to C is the square root of 5. And we figured out that the distance from A to C is just 5. So what would have to be true here is that the distance square root of 20 squared plus the square root of 5 squared would have to equal, we don't know if it does yet, but it would have to equal 5 squared. Well, the square root of 20 squared, when I square a square root, the square root goes away, I just get 20. Again, when I square a square root, the square root goes away, and I just get 5. So does 20 plus 5 equal 5 squared? Well, 5 squared is 25, so looks like that works. So now we know that the triangle really is a right triangle. So what's the area of that right triangle? Well, the area is 1 half base times height. Now, it might be a little bit tricky to think about what the height of this triangle is. If we were trying to look at this triangle the way it's oriented on the screen right now, if we're trying to figure out the height of this triangle, in other words, this distance here that I'm drawing in pink, that pink height would actually be quite difficult to figure out given the information that we have. But what we can do instead is we can flip the triangle around and draw it so that the right angle is at the bottom. If we do that, 
Then what we know is that the base of my triangle, which is the short side, that's the square root of 5, and the height of my triangle, that's this tall side, that's the square root of 20. So now I know the base and the height of my triangle now that I flipped it around this way. So I get 1 half, the base of my triangle is the square root of 5, the height of my triangle is the square root of 20. And when I multiply those together, if I multiply two square roots, the product of two square roots is the square root of a product, so that's 5 times 20 under the square root, which is 100. The square root of 100 is 10, and so I get 1 half of 10, which works out to be 5. So we've got all the answers to our questions here. We found the lengths of the three sides of our triangle, we found that it really is a right triangle, and then we've used that with a little bit of geometric manipulation uh, to figure out that the area of the triangle is 5. All right, let's do another problem. This time we're going to use both the midpoint and the distance formulas. So we're told that a baseball diamond is a square, 90 feet on a side, and that a shortstop is standing exactly halfway between second and third base and needs to throw the ball to home plate. And we want to know how far from home plate is he. So the way we're going to do this, we want to use our knowledge of our coordinate system, and so far it doesn't look like this problem has anything to do with coordinates. So let's make it have something to do with coordinates. Let's draw our baseball diamond so that home plate is right here at the origin, so we'll call that home. First base will be along the x-axis, so we'll call that first. Second base is going to be out here up in quadrant one, so we'll call that second. And then third base will be over here on the y-axis. And so our baseball diamond, we can see, is this square right here. So because the baseball diamond is 90 feet on a side, that's 90, that's 90, that's 90, and that's 90. Then we can figure out the coordinates of these points. This point is going to be the point 90, 0, because we're 90 spaces over on the x-axis. Second base is going to be 90, 90. And then third base is going to be uh, 0, 90. So when we're told that we're going to be exactly halfway between second and third base, that means that this green point right here, that's where our shortstop is. That's where our little shortstop here is. So you appreciate my lovely art. So where is that green point? What are the coordinates of that green point? Well, the midpoint is given by, remember, the average of the x-coordinates. In this case, that's 0 plus 90 divided by 2, comma, the average of the y-coordinates, which in this case is 90 plus 90, divided by 2. So I added the two x-coordinates together, the 0 and the 90, and that gave me my midpoint x-coordinate, and I'm adding my two y-coordinates, 90 and 90, and averaging those, and that's going to give me the y-coordinate of my midpoint. So when I work that out, that's going to work out to be 45, comma, 90. So that's where our shortstop is standing. So now what we want to know, what the question is asking us for, is what's the distance between the shortstop and home plate? But we know the two coordinates of those points now. We know that the shortstop is standing at 45 comma 90, and we know that home plate is at the origin 0 comma 0. So now we're going to use our distance formula. And our distance formula tells us that the distance that the shortstop has to throw the ball is the square root of the difference in the x-coordinates. Remember, home plate is at 0, 0. So the x-coordinates difference is 45 minus 0 squared plus 90 minus 0 squared. Now the numbers are getting a little big, so we'd like to uh, use our calculator here. 45 minus 0 is 45, and when we square that, we get 2,025. 90 minus 0 is 90, and when we square that, we get 8,100. Adding together 2,025 and 8,100 gives us 10,125. And when we compute the square root of 10,125 on our calculator, we get that it's approximately equal to 100.6. So that means that our shortstop has to throw the ball just over 100 feet to get to from his position to home plate. And that's our answer.